Today is our four year wedding anniversary. Yes. And today we want to give you four tips to have your marriage survive, thrive, and continue to be fulfilling. So with that said, let's get into it. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. <laughs> we see the entire journey being played out through the dating stage, through the engagement stage, and through the marriage stage. And Even further back, being friends. Oh, being friends. And dating, yeah. yeah. So this is a, the maturation of all those years. And this video is specifically about marriage and yes. how important that marriage stage is because a relationship is good, but there is a different level of respect and honor when it comes to actually marrying your partner. Make it be official. Yeah, I think that you understand that there is a deeper level of responsibility right. that comes with being in a marriage. And oftentimes you're working toward a goal and the goal is to get married. But then people think once you're married, all right, that's it. I made it to the goal. And then it doesn't require further work. Right. And so, you know, we want to have this conversation about, OK, now we're in it. How can we continue to be in it and enjoy it? How right. can we make this a joyous marriage? How mm. can we make this a, a fulfilled marriage? Yeah. Um, not just we made it to marriage, but OK. And then what? What yeah. happens after that? Yeah, and we, so go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, because there's a difference between surviving marriage and thriving in marriage. Exactly. And yes. everything that you just hit on mm -hmm. is kind of what we're going to go into with mm -hmm. these four points. And the first thing I already actually already said it, which was honor and respect. Mm -hmm. The first thing that we want to talk about, and this is no particular order mm -hmm. when we talk about these four different points, but honor and respect, mm -hmm. honor and, and respecting your partner, honor and respecting your relationship and mm -hmm. your marriage. All of that is so important and, and never forgetting that. And that's actually why we're wearing these shirts right here. This is what it's really all about. I'm her king. She's my queen. And we want to have that honor and respect in our relationship. Mm -hmm. And I want her to always know that she is the queen and that she deserves to be treated as such. Mm -hmm. And everything that I do, every decision, every action that I take is to honor and respect her. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not doing it out of that honor and respect, then I'm not doing it for the relationship. I'm mm -hmm. not doing it for our marriage. Mm -hmm. And that's not how it should be right. because marriage is a, is a, it's a it's a mutual, a mutual it's thing. a mutual um, relationship. It's mm -hmm. a relationship meaning um, the building of something between two people. Right. So the decisions that you make, the actions that you take, day in and day out of your relationship, it should be mutually beneficial to both people in the marriage because exactly. we're operating as one. Yeah. And and I wanted to um, kind of bring this point to light as well because when we say honor and respect, yes, the, the we want to honor and respect our partner and our queen or our king in the relationship. But we also have to know that we're also human too. Right. Like that there's no, there's nobody on this earth that doesn't make mistakes, mm -hmm. but it's about the magnitude of mistakes that right. you make. And it's about learning from your mistakes and mm -hmm. not allowing something to continue to be a, a problem in your relationship. Mm -hmm. And if there is a problem in your relationship, how are you working on it to fix it? Yeah. And that's, that's the thing about honor and respecting your relationship mm -hmm. because you can make a mistake, but are you doing things to correct yourself? Are right. you doing things to correct your habits and your routines mm -hmm. to be able to be a better husband, to be a better, mm -hmm. a better wife? Yeah. And I think in order to understand how you can be a better husband or better wife or how you can show up better in your marriage, when we talk about honor and respect, maybe you should sit down and have a conversation with your partner and say, what does honor and respect look like to you? What right. does that mean to you? Right. And I can tell you what it means to me. And then we can see if we're on the same page. Yeah. So you feel like you're being seen and you're being heard. And when you say honor and respect, your partner is reflective of that and mm -hmm. vice versa. Mm -hmm. So going on to the next point I'm actually going to cover is going to be stewardship. Mm -hmm. And so as we mention these things like honor and respect, all of these things are, you know, managing responsibilities that come with being in a marriage. And when you're in a marriage, you're tasked with responsibilities. That's like, hey, marriage is this thing that we're going to honor. Right. Marriage is this thing that we're going to nurture so that 
it can consist so that we can continue to have a healthy relationship and there's responsibilities and work that responsibility and work that come along with that mm. and stewardship could look like well so what does responsibility look like it could be quality time it could be making sure that your partner is happy right. it can be listening to your partner understanding what your partner's needs are um Understanding that there are differences, but what are we doing to work at it? Are we battling miscommunication? All of these things are little responsibilities that we have to work at day in and day out as stewards yeah. to make the marriage work. That is such a great point. And it really comes down to that. It comes down to your responsibility mm -hmm. because you have a responsibility for yourself as mm -hmm. an individual to be a better man, be mm -hmm. a better woman. But when you look outside of yourself, when you look mm -hmm. beyond yourself, how can you be responsible for building a happy home, yeah. building a happy marriage mm -hmm. and building a happy family? All of those things take day in and day out work. Like yes. you said, it's about those routines. It's about those habits mm -hmm. and building those healthy habits provides you the responsibility for you to pour into your marriage, mm -hmm. to pour into your relationship and to mm -hmm. pour into yourself. Exactly. Because all of that, all of these things are a reflection of yourself. Mm -hmm. How strong your marriage is, is a reflection of how strong you are and the, the habits that you've built over time to make it last. Mm -hmm. I mean, not only to just to make it last, but to actually have a fulfilling relationship that your partner or you mm -hmm. do not want to sever ties from. Mm -hmm. And I think that's extremely important. So yes. that's a great point. So the next point that we wanted to touch on is adaptability. Ooh, and you will definitely need that in yeah. any relationship, but especially in marriage. Exactly. Because what do we know about marriage? And any marriage, you want it to be for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When you walk down that aisle and you say, I do to your partner, mm -hmm. you want that to be your partner for the rest of your life. Exactly. So what do we know about life? We know that life is ever changing, is ever changing, that there's always something that comes up that, that changes your perspective, that mm -hmm. changes your mindset, mm -hmm. that changes the things that of how you view things. Mm -hmm. And if we know life mm -hmm. and marriage are kind of synonymous mm -hmm. when it comes to evolution, yeah. evolution of yourself, mm -hmm. evolution of just life in general, mm -hmm. It takes adapting. So how you, how your relationship, how your marriage looks in year one will not look the same in year five. Exactly. It will not look the same in year 10. It won't look the same in year 20. You have to continue to adapt. Exactly. And as you adapt as an uh, individual, as one person, you also have to have your relationship adapt too because it's two people mm -hmm. who have their own individual lives who are continuing to go through life and have different experiences that are shaping and shifting their mm -hmm. mind. Mm -hmm. So along that journey of us adapting as individuals, mm -hmm. then we have to take that those two individuals and figure out how to adapt together so yes. that it's both people on the same page throughout this entire journey of marriage. Of course, and you think about things that changes one's mindset throughout the course of life you know through evolution and things like that like you said people often say I'm not the same person I was two years ago right. you know growth is a beautiful thing I've said that many of the times um or you know if I could look back to, and talk to my old self so if we're saying these things from an individualistic perspective then it's very clear that in a marriage this is going to take some adaptability not only that major life changing events happen right. throughout the course of a marriage, such as one, you got married <laughs> two have now become one. So they now have this, um, mindset that at times should be synonymous mm -hmm. Two, you have things happening. Like you're having a baby. You are us. <laughs> we just had, we just had a baby not too long ago, four and a half months ago. Exactly. You know, we just had a child. And so Things like that. Children changes your perspective, you know. And that's a big you, one. A career change, yeah. things like that, relocation, all of those things. So um, when you have these major life-changing events as well, that also changes the nature of your marriage as well. Right. And it's very important to go back, reflect, yeah. have a conversation about these things and be able to adapt to be able to say, okay, this is not how our marriage was back in year one. Year three is looking real different, but 
we are embracing the changes. If there's changes that we're not necessarily comfortable with or difficult, we got to have conversation. We got to communicate to make sure we can go through these changes and endure together. Exactly. If it's in a, a in a healthy way, you exactly. know, because man, yeah. and and honestly, bonus bonus tip. This is like a bonus number five because we, we we still got to get to four, right. but. Bonus tip is communication. Oh yeah, I mean communication. We, is the, we, we can put that netty. It bo- boils down to everything. Yeah, yeah, it boils down to everything. But like what you were saying, mm-hmm. it just it made me think about it. Is like it really takes the communication. Of course, when it comes to adapting, you mm-hmm. have to communicate. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, this life change has happened, mm-hmm. but how are we going to get through this? Exactly. How are we going to change? Um, and for us personally. Like we, we just had a baby mm-hmm. five months ago and our relationship has completely changed. Yes. Our view, our minds have completely mm-hmm. changed and there has been challenging parts yes. in these first five months. Of course. And there's been times where we're both angry or frustrated mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, not in the best space as far as like being on the same page. Mm-hmm. But how do we get past that? We, we understand that we have to adapt. And, and we understand that we have to honor and respect each other through adaptation. And we have mm-hmm. to figure out how to communicate. Exactly. And all of these things in the stewardship. Like because all we understand of this, that these are the responsibilities that come forth with being in a marriage. Exactly. And to make it work. We have to. And that, again, it goes back to constantly working in your relationship mm-hmm. and understanding mm-hmm. that once you make it to marriage, you know, the buck just doesn't stop there. Right. You have to continuously work at it. Man, I mean, I'm getting excited just talking about this because as we yeah. are like explaining our personal story, like mm-hmm. we're intertwining all of these points that exactly. we're talking about. So exactly. we're saying it from experience because yes. we know we, we're th- we're going through it. Yeah. You know, we've been at this since 2010 to 2023. <laughs> so we got we got a little we got a little got, bit of skin in the game yeah, now. We got a little skin Listen in the to game. Us. So, Listen you know, to us. <laughs> and we're, we're not just talking just on YouTube. Now we've been about this for 13 years yes. and now four years in marriage and, and marriage. And so, so, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the last point? So the last point with you getting excited and all, it's making me excited because the last point is to have fun in your marriage. Hey. You got to have fun in your marriage. Like when you're in a marriage, you're still dating. You yeah. should still make make sure that you are creating fun and new and exciting experiences, mm-hmm. whatever that looks like for you. Mm-hmm. Every relationship is different. But I think that oftentimes you hear people when they talk about some of the challenges that they've experienced um, in their relationship or reasons why the relationship has dissolved, the mm-hmm. marriage has dissolved, is because they said that their partner doesn't make them happy. They're not having fun. They haven't smiled. They haven't yeah. joked, you know? And I think that it is so important because when you're in it for the long haul, you got a lifetime you together. Right. And you want to make sure that we're constantly like enjoying each other's company, right. enjoying each other's time. Like I want to make you smile. I, hope, I want you to make me smile every day. Like you should be the person that I go to mm-hmm. for everything. And if I know that I need to pick me up, if I know I want to smile, laugh, have some fun, the first person person that I should think of is my partner. That's powerful. Mm-hmm. So when's the last time you laughed with your partner? Yeah. When's the last time you had a really fun experience with your partner, mm-hmm. just going on a, a spontaneous date or something mm-hmm. like these things are so important for the longevity of a relationship mm-hmm. of a marriage because when you lose that aspect of fun you're really losing that aspect of your marriage mm-hmm. you're losing the aspect of the connection mm-hmm. the because conne- part of it is most of the time when people meet someone what makes them want to stay with that person for a very long time and who they see themselves with is because of the fun that they've had with that person right. and those experiences that they've shared with that person. Right. And they want to continue to have that fun right. and share these new experiences for a lifetime. Mm-hmm. So when a part of that is gone, you take away that fun. It's like it's taking away a piece of the marriage. Yeah. And it, and it takes away the thrill. Yeah. And a lot of relationships get, they get started off of the thrill, but then when the thrill is gone, when that spark kind of well as far as like the puppy love stage Mm -hmm. is gone then you lose that sense of fun but a real long-lasting relationship gets past that puppy love stage Mm -hmm. get past the whole thrill of a new relationship stage and 
understands the the true foundation and fundamentals of who this person is Mm -hmm. and who they can be for you Mm -hmm. and your relationship and your your love for that person is based off of that based off of who they actually Mm -hmm. are not just the thrill of something new and i'm going to throw a corny little bit in there just to say, when you think about the fundamentals of a marriage, you can't spell fundamentals without fun. <laughs> <laughs> that was corny. In- <laughs> What'd you get? So, <laughs> just keep that in mind. But we can end it off of that. We can end it off your corny joke. We can end it off my corny joke. So to wrap things up, the four points that we wanted to share with you guys, just some tips to uh, keep that spark alive, to thrive, um, to find joy in your marriage, and that's honor and respect. Mm-hmm. That's adaptability. We also have stewardship. And remember to keep it fun in your marriage. So with that said, we're going to go ahead and close out. My name is Jen. I'm Shane. And we are the Yambors. Find joy in the journey. Peace. Boom. 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 Oh, no. Which one we doing? (laughs) (laughs) You said boom. (laughs) It wasn't even like this. The rock. Clover time. (laughs) The rock and the paper. (laughs) Oh, so you did that, but you always lose on rock, paper, scissors. How? Uh, That's just recently, Jen. Try now. Right now. Rock, Rock, paper, paper, scissors, scissors, shoot. shoot. Boom. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) I do the same, and I do the same. I start with the same thing every time, which is wild. Oh, you just gave me your secret. Yeah, and you're still going to lose. Do it again. Well, now I know you know it's fresh on your mind. Come on. Rock, Rock, paper, paper, scissors, shoot. shoot. Boom. Yeah. You felt like you did so I literally just. Building a happy home, building a happy marriage, building a happy family. All of those things take day in and day out work. Like you said, it's about those routines, it's about those habits. And building those healthy habits provides you the responsibility for you to pour into your marriage, to pour into your relationship, and to pour into yourself.